So, Margaret, you've been pretty robust with business, shall we say, but you heard John Cridland there uh, admitting that some of the criticism were valid. He's moved a bit. Are you going to move a bit and admit you've overdone it? I'm totally agnostic on who provides. What I'm concerned about is that the taxpayer's pound should be used to provide effective economic and efficient services, whether it's the private sector, the public sector or the voluntary sector. And I won't move from that passion to ensure value for money. I think the private sector has got an enormous contribution to make. I was really heartened by what the CBI said about their commitment to greater transparency, their desire to see real competition. Uh, and I would simply add to that agenda that I think government has got to get better at contracting with the private sector so we defend and promote the public interest. And I think the private sector, if it enters into this space, has to show that it's really got ethical standards in the way it behaves. The problem is your leader's really driven a wedge between the party and big business. Isn't it time now for Labour to start doing what used to be called the prawn cocktail circuit as the election approaches? I think um, it's hugely important to say that, uh, and I think Ed would say it were he answering this question, it, he is in no way um, being anti-business. What he's identifying are issues that need to be tackled to make markets work effectively, both in, in the interests of everyone, whether it's the companies themselves or whether it's indeed in the public interest. He's right to identify that. If you ask me on the specific, will there be a massive change in direction if there's a change in government in the involvement of the private sector in delivering public services? I don't think there will be, because in the end, we want the best deliverer to be engaged in providing the best value for the least amount of taxpayers' money.